Hello, my name is Mark, and I'm going to be giving you a speech on memory and why we need it and to improve it. So memory has been on a decline in terms of short-term and long-term memory uh, steadily every year. We have had the same school system for hundreds of years, and yet we still seem to use our memory less and the reason being is because technology is so readily available that we can just look something up or an answer to something on the fly, mobile, within seconds. Now back in the day, 1800s and so forth, they didn't have that. So they actually had to have their memory as a library full of all the knowledge because they didn't know if they were going to be able to see their books again and the strictness was so intense. So what we have to work on first is short-term memory. Now in the survey that I had posted to the discussion board, um, the, I will actually be giving the answers now. Um, so there was a man named Gerald McCrocken and he actually discovered that there was seven items, give or take two, um, for how many you could actually hold for items wise or subject wise on uh, your short term memory is seven give or take two so five max nine now there were techniques way back in the Greek times with Caesar where there were troops remembered by the thousands by one or two individuals just for meeting them once now, the, this is an ancient form of memory, but it is the strongest because that is all they had to work with. Um, so what we're looking at is how it could be useful in a test or exam. Imagine it, you have a 100 question test, and it could be answered simply from your mind. There's no what I call brain fog, and that's where you draw blanks, you really you think you know the answer, or you may know the answer, but you just, you cannot remember, recall it. And the reason being is you didn't use enough senses or uh, study the material in the right way for you. I remember back when I would study mathematics when I was a younger kid, and I struggled very much with uh, times tables as far as just being able to go 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90, I didn't know that there was a pattern to each and every number, which there is. And I memorized that, and it helped me be able to pull up the answers just because I, I made it relate to me in a special way. So it's the same with memorizing questions or calculations. You can really use this form of memory technique for anything. And what is the one that I'm mainly going to focus on because it's academics is the link pattern memory or otherwise known as the chain memory system and what this is is you have an item that you need to remember or a certain text and you link it to something you've already learned in the past because in order to create a new memory you have to have an old one to relate to it just like how you know a definition of words you need you can make tail or actually uh, unfold messages in text by knowing the, what all the words mean. Just like reading an autobiography or anything of that sort, you know what the words mean so you're able to actually take away from the book because you had previous understanding of the words. So it, it linked. And you can actually use that to your advantage in many other ways uh, without just running into it. So what you would do is, let's say you have to memorize 10 uh, definition words. You could think of the definition in your mind and go on a journey. They also have the journey method, and I'll go into that a little bit too. I actually like to use the chain memory with the journey method. The journey method is where you think of a familiar area that you're in, so say my apartment for example, every room I could imagine starting in, in a point, so say the front porch, and go through on the left and the right, I can actually have items or meaning of words that I want to remember. So let's say 
let's say I have words like toothbrush and a frying pan. Random, that would not be simple to just remember on the fly if you say you went to the store, this would come in handy for something like this. Or if you had speech <laughs> definitions um, that you'd have to remember what made them unique. So, say for impromptu, you can imagine uh, what I would do is I would imagine randomness. I would imagine just random occurrences from an individual on my right and then on my left for a persuasive speech I could touch on a subject where it's always a persuasive conversation which politics would be one so I could have politics on my left and on the right in the in the front porch I could have um, impromptu um, so you can actually use these different techniques to develop your mind and what I will be doing uh, on the board when I have one um, I will be actually going through with everyone on items. I'm going to try to get everyone to remember each and every item on the board, which is 10. That breaks the uh, 7, give or take 2. I, we will be able to break that with these techniques. Um, so in conclusion, memory is an essential thing that has lost its spark and its value. And I think that we should reevaluate what memory is and why we should use our memory more than what we are now as exams and quizzes will not let you fully automate information uh, and figuring it out so I hope this made it clear for everyone and uh, yeah hopefully uh, you will start to pursue your techniques in your personal life and it will help you in the long run thank you